can protect your anointing because it is God that gives it to you. He anoints, but it is you that place value on things. Whatever you value, you protect. That's why a mother will protect her child. That's why um, in the animal kingdom, you'll see them protect their young because that's what they value. So what you value is what you protect. So even how Proverbs chapter 4 said, guard your heart with all diligence. It's talking about all diligence. So that means that there's varieties of diligence. You could be at certain levels of diligence and not reach the full totality. So that means that there's still a place inside of your life that's open. Okay, so when you look at the aspect of protecting your anointing, You protect what God teaches you based upon how you value it. You protect what God teaches you based upon how you value it. So the level of your value is the level of your discretion. Discretion is the, the security guard of divine info. Discretion is the security guard of divine info. You're protecting something that been entrusted to you by God. The earth entered into a crisis when man sinned in Genesis. When they sinned in Genesis, the earth entered into a crisis because it wasn't supposed to be like that. What is really sin is the discovery of information that God never wanted in you. Sin is the discovery of a behavior, the discovery of a relationship, the discovery of a thought, the discovery of a desire, the discovery of a career, the discovery of an appetite, the discovery of food, which is really translated doctrine. What is doctrine? It's information that's taught to you. In segments. A doctrine is information that's taught to you in segments. That means that you, you hear about um, cardio here in one aspect of running. You learn about it in walking. You learn about it in um, uh, sit-ups. You learn about it in push-ups. You learn about it in jogging. See, these are segments of one subject, one doctrine. Cardio. The earth entered into a crisis when man sinned, so it was appropriate for the father to name his son Christ. Because Christ is a root that can uproot crisis. The crisis was confronted by the Christ. But the father used a mechanism to fix the crisis that sin brought into the world. And he used the mechanism called sowing. The father in his genius, in his intelligence, in his brain, I don't want to say brainstorming, I want to say brain forming. In the father's brain forming, isn't that amazing? Not brainstorming, brain forming. Because a storm is chaotic. That's why the Lord would speak to the winds. Yes, the waves, but the winds. Because the winds are the formation of the storm. The effectiveness of the storm is in the winds. What is the effectiveness of a hurricane? Winds. What's the effectiveness of tornadoes, winds? What's the effectiveness of a tsunami, the winds? So in God's brain forming, he decided I want to fix this crisis. 
So let me go to my department system called sewing. Because this is the only way I'm going to fix the problems I have in my life. The problem in my life right now is that man that I created are disobedient to me. They are disinterested in me. They don't like me. They don't want me. They don't desire me. They don't think that I'm fun. They don't think that I'm life. They want evil. They want to go in contradiction to my plan. They want to pursue what I said is illegal. They want to flirt with what I said is not allowed. They want to partake of what I said is forbidden. So the father in his brain forming said, let me start sowing. And my sowing will fix the crisis. My sowing will impart the Christ into the hearts of evil men, contrary men, distracted men, uh, men that lack focus, men that lack purity, men that lack fo uh, obedience, men that lack righteousness, men that lack consistency, men that lack prayer, men that lack denying themselves, men that lack peacemaking, men that lack joy, men that lack meditation of my word. Imagine the father said, if I start a sowing that is bountiful, it is special, and it takes from me, it causes me to lose something that I value. I treasure my son. But if I sow this type of seed, It'll give me this type of results. Imagine if God goes to sowing to fix a major issue. What do you go to in life when issues arise? What do you go to? What do you go to? What do you go to? If the creator of the universe, the one that created all things, if he's going through problems and troubles and his heart is disturbed because man is going to hell one by one because they love Satan, Satan doesn't love them, but Satan is giving them an offer that you could do whatever you want, say what you want, go with who you want, live how you want, and, and Satan is tricking them because it feels good to have this illusion, this delusion of freedom. I'm free. Because I do whatever I feel. I say whatever I feel. I act however I feel. I go wherever I feel. I connect with who is who I'm feeling. If I'm feeling them, I connect with them. I pursue them. There's no restraint. That's why so many people are in hell. Because there's no restraint. You can just do what you want, say what you want, go with who you want, whenever. That's why everybody is in hell. Hell is overpopulated right now. It's overcrowded. There's no space. There's no life. There's no oxygen. There's no comfort. Because everybody lived to do what they felt. No patience. No wisdom, no fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You know why? Because when you fear God, you respect God. When you respect God, you become patient. One of the major evidences of, patient, uh, of, of wisdom and fearing God is patience. You want to know how you fear God? Look at your patience. What is your tolerance level? What is your temperance? How do you control your temper? Do you know your temper is your, is your temperature? You could be hot, you could be cold. Coldness really deals with bitterness. Hotness really deals with lust. So when somebody, their temperature is cold, they want revenge. They don't want to hear advice about peace. They don't want to hear advice.
What does it mean when somebody said there's a strong anointing? What does that mean? That means the intensity of God's information is being understood by you. A strong anointing means that the information that God gives is being comprehended by you in a very clear and understandable manner. Us, the anointing becomes strong based upon understanding. And all you're getting a wisdom, get understanding. So what is the major thing that keeps wisdom flowing in a person? Understanding. So what is the difference between wisdom and understanding? Wisdom is the introduction to what God wants you to know. It's the introduction to what God wants you to do. It's the introduction to what God wants you to say. It's the introduction to who God wants you to be. It's the introduction to whom God wants you to be around. So what's understanding? It is your dedication, your loyalty, your focus, your faithfulness to that information. It's your faithfulness to the character that God has imparted to you. That means that you continue operating in that character in all seasons of your life. Adversity, persecution, when you're laughed at, when you're mocked, when you're not having your way, when you decree something and something happens against what you decreed. You said, I will never get sick, and then you get sick. But your character doesn't change because you have understanding. You say, I'll never be broke another day in my life. Then you find out all your money is gone. You lost all your money. And this is where God lets you see whether or not you're double-minded or you're established. Psalm 112 talked about a man with an established heart. James chapter 1 verse 8 and on talked a man about a man that had a double-minded heart. The Bible said in James chapter 1, let not that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord because he's double-minded. Don't let him think that he'll receive anything from the Lord. What that means is when, when you don't have no establishment in your heart, you're not faithful to your impartation. It said that you disqualify yourself from receiving anything from God. Harvests, answers, petitions granted, miracles, multiplication, promotion, increase, advancement, protection, strength, joy, peace, happiness. So understanding is the protection of wisdom. Understanding is the revelation of how to never stop being godly. Understanding means that you never get hindered in being led by God's spirit. His spirit is guiding what you say, what you do, how you act, how you be. So when the father had an issue, he went to sowing. When Isaac had an issue, he went to sowing. When Solomon had an issue, what was Solomon's issue? He didn't know how to lead the people as the king, but yet he's being called to be the king. So he's being called to be the king, but he doesn't know how to lead as a king. So he goes to the seed and then the seed gives him access to God. And God says, what shall I give you? And he said, Lord, I need wisdom on how to be the king. I need understanding on how to be a king. I need to know what to do and what to say to how to lead the people correctly. I don't want to pervert nobody. I don't want nobody to miss the mark because of my judgments. So I need your wisdom. So he used the seed to access solutions. Seed, sowing, is how you access the next phase 
of answers for your conduct, for your mind, for your deeds, for your behavior. If you're not willing to sow, you're not willing to grow. Because God has hidden in the seed your growth. Look at uh, Genesis chapter 26, uh, verse 12 and 13. The Bible said, and Isaac waxed great, and he grew. It said that he waxed great, and he grew. He became prosperous, and he grew. So his growth was in the seed. So if he doesn't sow, he doesn't grow. This is why Satan doesn't want people to honor God, because you will outgrow evil. You will outgrow the demonic. You will outgrow your temptations. You will outgrow your pettiness. You will outgrow your immaturity. You will outgrow your hatred, your jealousy, your lust, your ungodliness, your strife, your bitterness, your competition, your envy, your enmity with God, deep-seated hatred, which means you dislike the cross he picked for you. You dislike the method in which he chose to teach you, which means you dislike the seasons that he has chosen for you to walk through. 